I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Avalon City Council, September 16th. If we may have, um, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Only lead us, please. Please follow me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, another God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I would just like to quote the famous Teddy Roosevelt, remembering we all do well when we all do well. And you may sit down. <laughs> Roll call, Denise. What are you smiling about? Oh, that was good. <laughs> Council Member Cassidy. Here. Council Member Sampson. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Olson. Here. Mayor Marshall. Here. And for the records, Council, Menzer, Council Member Hernandez is absent. Excuse them. Okay. Do we have any announcements or written, uh, other written communication that you'd like to do? Yeah, I do. Um, I would uh, like to read a proclamation of the City Council of the City of Avalon recognizing September 2014 as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Um, and before I actually read the proclamation, would like to just make a reminder for those that, that are interested that tonight, hosted in the Casino Ballroom, is the Grand Baile at 7 p.m., which is uh, a, an event, nine bands that will be playing tonight, and the proceeds go to help can fund cancer research for children with Jude's um, Children's Hospital. And that, is, that event is put on by Eddie Vega Jr. and Sylvia Rivera. And there is also notable great support from the Island Company, from the event location, and many, many other businesses and folks in town who are involved in putting that on. So tonight, 7 p.m. at the Casino Ballroom. And I'm, I'm sorry I don't know the price of the tickets offhand, but with that, I'll read this proclamation. Whereas the American Cancer Fund for Children and Kids Cancer Connection report cancer is the leading cause of death by disease among U.S. children between infancy and age 15. This tragic disease is detected in nearly 15,000 of our country's young people each and every year. Whereas one in five of our nation's children loses his or her battle with cancer. Many infants, children, and teens will suffer from long-term effects of comprehensive treatment, including secondary cancers, and whereas founded 20 years ago by Stephen Firestein, a member of the philanthropic Max Factor family, the American Cancer Fund for Children, Inc., and Kids Cancer Connection, Inc., are dedicated to helping these children and their families and whereas the American Cancer Fund for Children and Kids Cancer Connection provide a variety of vital patient psychosocial services to children undergoing cancer treatment at Children's Hospital Los Angeles, Mattel Children's Hospital at UCLA, LA County USC Medical Center, as well as participating hospitals throughout the country, thereby enhancing the quality of life for these children and their families and whereas the American Cancer Fund for Children and Kids Cancer Connection also sponsor nationwide Courageous Kid Recognition Award Ceremonies and Hospital Celebrations in honor of a child's determination and bravery to fight the battle against childhood cancer. Now, therefore, I, Council Member Cindy McGugan Cassidy, and Ann Marshall, Mayor of the City of Avalon, would like to thank Kids Cancer Connection for all their support in honoring and encouraging those living with cancer and encouraging our citizens to raise awareness about the prevention and control of cancer. Thank you. That was not easy with all you guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. And we also have well, another, then. what's that? Well, well done. Oh, well, yes. We also have another proclamation. Will, would Luis Martinez please step forward and... Chief Krug. And Chief Krug. Yes. And Ole Olson. Hmm. Hmm. 
be appropriate for you guys to go for. Yeah. Councilmember Sampson, you should go up too. City staff, uh, we essentially had to trick Luis Martinez into this tonight. He's a very humble man, and uh, we had to coordinate this with a council meeting and a drill night so we could essentially sabotage him or, or trick him into being here to receive these accolades because he didn't, he just wanted to go back to work, and it was just another day at the office for him. Um, that being said, uh, the shortly after Luis had his incident down on a, uh, the dive boat, uh, Tim Mitchell, where's Tim Mitchell at? Tim Mitchell, step forward for a second. Tim Mitchell had a very similar uh, incident on the dive boat with an unresponsive diver. About five minutes of CPR and, or actually quite a, about five minutes of downtime for the diver. Uh, CPR was initiated very similar type of circumstances. The patient was uh, talking and breathing on his own when they flew him off the island. Um, and that was with Bob Kennedy as well. He was the captain of the boat. Um, so congratulations. <laughs> And then 
uh, uh, lastly, I've just been asked to remind everybody we're in the process of doing our semi-annual hydrant maintenance, and so we're flowing and flushing saltwater hydrants. So if uh, people see us in the street putting a bunch of water on the street, please don't throw rocks and stones and all the stuff we've been getting lately. It's salt water, not fresh water. We do ex exercise the fresh water hydrants as well, but we only have to discharge a very minimal amount of fresh water when we do that. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you, gentlemen and lady. I think is Jesse in there somewhere? Is Jesse here somewhere? He already left. Oh, okay. All righty. Thank you. You're welcome Thank to you. stick around. <laughs> Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Very much. Um, Mayor, with, with uh, the hope of the council, I would like to respectfully request that going forward, we potentially take mayor report and council report and... Um, City Clerk's report at the beginning of the meeting after our written communications so that we can, any announcements or thank yous or things that we want to do going forward, those can be at the beginning of the meeting. If Makes sense to me. Okay. No. Yeah, because by the end of the night, usually it's pretty quiet out there. Right. Yes. Okay. And can we start that with today's meeting? Is it, are we ready for that? Sure you can. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. I want. You can change. Do you want to yeah. do that? Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So I have two two quick ones. Um, the first one is on uh, behalf of the Catalina Island Women's Forum. Wanted to say thank you for everybody coming out to participate in our annual wine festival, which helps support scholarships for junior. Uh, well, we have a program that goes for junior and senior girls, and these are scholarships that they are able to apply for each year. And with that, wanted to say thank you to um, Frank Francisco and Dennis Jayich for, and the city in general for the services that the city helped to provide and the space that we were able to use down on Front Street. So thank you very much for that. Um, and then the second announcement, um, I attended the Gateway Cities Council of Government meeting last uh, Wednesday, September 10th. And a point of interest for some may be that the blue line over in Long Beach is going to be closed for a couple of the stops just off of, um, just off of the boat for anybody who uses that. The dates will be a 30-day period from September 20th to October 20th or October 19th. And the rail portion for between Anaheim, First and Pacific, and I think two other stops will be closed. However, they will have bus service that will, will transport people to a location where the rail will actually be underway. Great. Mr. Sampson, did you have any announcements or report? Uh, no, not this time. Okay. Did you go someplace? Oh, yes. Perfect time to report that. Should, should we report that right <laughs> yeah. now? Should. Okay, yeah. yeah. We went to, uh, we had a session, uh, it's called the League of California Cities, uh, that I actually um, um, attended um, the week before last, and it was, uh, it was, it was quite um, um, enlightening, was what it was. I took um, a couple courses, and, and um, I want to thank the, um, the, the, the people of Avalon for sending me to this, because... Um, you're the ones, ones that pretty much picked up the tab, and uh, we studied pretty hard. Um, we had a couple of general sessions. One of them uh, featured Dr. Benjamin Barber, who's, who's been, who's wrote some books, and basically um, he stood up and he gave us um, some, some great um, uh, advice about what it is to be a politician in California and um, what basically what our responsibilities are and what we need to do to, um, to be effective, effective leaders. Uh, took a course called Mayors and Council Members. Uh, we had a, also another opening general session with a, um, a comedian actually called Michael Pritchard. This was thir three days into our, um, our session. It was actually uh, really welcome because 
there was probably several thousand people in there um, um, at the time, and uh, we were all Cal leaders of California. There was 420 uh, different cities that were represented. Um, I met a lot of mayors. Um, I seeked out a lot of mayors and council members from uh, cities that I thought I might be able to enlighten me um, on things such as uh, water, uh, the perspectives on water, um, budgeting, um, how to get along with uh, your community, how you better com better your community, and um, just to enlighten me on new things that I, I may have been able to learn from that. Um, I also went to a class called the Drought Statewide Perspective and Lessons Learned, and we took we we uh, learned from three people, three communities from uh, uh, such as um, Tehachapi, Santa Cruz, and Long Beach on what their perspectives are on water, and how they were dealing with their um, their water uh, supplies and their dwindling water supplies, and how they're going to go about dealing with that into the future. Um, I also um, was enlightened, uh, took a course on um, in the impact of skate parks on communities, uh, reductions and benefits to at-risk youth, uh, uh, and uh, next generation managers as well. I took a, um, uh, a course on uh, city managers because um, I wanted to learn a little bit more um, about um, what uh, Ben Harvey's job is and um, other people like him around the community because and around the state because we throw a lot at Ben. I mean, I'm telling you, there's six, there's five of us up here and uh, we all are very demanding, especially in these times of such high demand. Uh, we have a lot of things on the table and I needed to understand where Ben was coming from, all the things, different things that he's handling and um, I, I, was, I was pretty relieved to say that I think we got a pretty darn good city manager um, because he doesn't really complain to us. He just <laughs> takes things one at a time and uh, the cream that floats to the top is, is pretty much, um, the, you know, the, the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease in this case. But we have things as little as, as, as city benches that need to be uh, put into place, trash that's on the ground up to things like major um, agreements uh, with uh, developers, stakeholders, We're, we got water supply on the table, we got redevelopment on the table, we got housing, we got uh, transportation, communication. I mean, there's so many things that, that it's, it's, it's bigger than any one of us. But Ben has to take it all in and uh, deal with it with Scott and Denise. And, it, and that particular course helped me understand a little bit more about uh, city managers. So I just wanted to tell you guys that your, your money is, um, is being well spent. Um, all the, um, the people that I sit up here on this board, um, we all studied really hard. And um, I tell you though, this guy Michael Pritchard, if you ever get a chance to look him up on the internet, um, you also need to laugh. And you need, uh, you need to, um, <laughs> You need, you need to enjoy life a little bit and you, and you need to relinquish yourself of some of the responsibilities every once in a while. Just if it's for an hour, if it's for 10 minutes, but just like take a break. And that's one thing I did learn was like, you, you need a new perspective to be a good leader, to be a good father, to be a good business owner, homeowner, stakeholder. So um, I just, I'll leave you with that and just let you know that um, um, we're, we're moving forward and we're gonna try to be the best um, interactive um, city council that you've seen in a long time. And um, we're gonna do our best at that. And I thank you for sending me to this uh, session. It was my pleasure. I'm looking forward to going next year as well. All right. I got to go to the same meeting that Mr. Sampson did, except I went to some boring things like stormwater management City financial woes. One good good one that was on um, filming and how the state of California is trying to keep Hollywood in Hollywood and keep the films here to keep them from running away, which is um, an important thing for all of Southern California and us too, if you think about back in the good old days. Um, it was three long days. It started at 8 o'clock in the morning and got done usually after dark sometime, but it was very informative and I appreciate that. What else did we do? Uh, I want to thank the Avalon Lions Club for the brew fest. They just had at Two Harbors. You would think that a, an event at Two Harbors doesn't benefit Avalon, but we also raise ten or twelve thousand dollars that we use for scholarships in Avalon. Uh, Cindy, 
I'm no. sorry. I was I'm just seeing how much trouble I was going to get in because I didn't say I went to the league conference. Oh, big trouble. <laughs> um, so those, if you missed it, it's uh, be happening again next year. Speaking of Brewfest, the City of Avalon, in cohorts with the Avalon Lions Club, Rotary, and Women's Forum, are going to have a beer on the beach, Brewfest, Oktoberfest, uh, South Beach, October 25th, from 1 to 4 p.m. Um, we saw a bunch of breweries down at Two Harbors, and we talked to about our upcoming event, and they were all terribly excited about it. So it's, I think it's going to be a fun event. The, uh, oh yes, here we go, Drink, drinking to the kids here. Um, the impotence for our Oktoberfest is to find a mechanism to help try to replace some of the church mouse. Church mouse was that um, charitable Marlin tournament that generated between thirty and sixty thousand dollars a year that went strictly to kid charities in Avalon: Pee Wee baseball, Little League football, basketball, soccer, the Catholic church kids, the community church kids, and so um, we hope that this will be an op opportunity to replace some of that money because. Our kids need it. I mean, it's, it's a small town. There's not a lot of resources for them. So put October 25th on your calendar, South Beach, 1 to 4. Uh, tickets are available at the Chamber now. Now. You can pick up your tickets. There's $60. That includes your souvenir mug and um, food and uh, appetite of food and beer tastings. There should be probably 30 booths, something like that, each booth having three or four different beers in it so you can get a a broad sampling of the beers available for us, and I think that's all I have. Kid friendly. There'll be a kid. There'll be a kid program. They won't. Kids won't be participating in the beer tasting. No, no. no. But Absolutely. they will. There will be activities for children. It's a little young to start beer tasting. No, it's yeah, yeah. We will definitely have some activities for the kids, and uh, own pop pop band, right? Real uh, authentic. Jennifer lined up a really cool um, authentic German band and. Uh, it's going to be fun, I'm telling you. If you can make it down there, even if you don't drink, I'm sure there'll be some non-alcoholic brews down there for people. Um, you'll be surprised at, at the different... Uh... Anyway, it's, uh, it's kind of going into our fall, too, so it's going to be, you know, soon before our fall, right after our, before our fall fest, correct? After. Yeah, so after. After, after. After the fall fest, but we're still going to, we're going to have this, the same um, enthusiasm going into... The holiday season so please show up okay just a couple things uh, I attended the league as well and we went to some of the same ones but um, I was fortunate to be able to go to the mayors some of those with the mayors and it's it's you know I'm five months old here as a mayor so it's really fascinating to talk to other people and network and find people as kind of mentors for lack of a better word and uh, so I was very excited and last Friday I went to uh, a mayor's meeting in Monterey Park which never even knew where that was um, it's a lovely city though with lots of parks and um, it was interesting a lot of the discussion mirrored what we discussed at the League of California City, what, Cities one of the most interesting ones was this Dr. Jones who works for Homeland Security Office of Homeland Security and she's on loan to the city of Los Angeles to try to try to work talk about the big earthquake which we haven't had in 300 years and this you know I'm really glad we live in Avalon and if this isn't time to this is a good reason to come by in Avalon because this earthquake could hit any minute and of all the hundreds of faults we have in California San Andreas is 200 miles long and it's right next to the California aqueduct and when that sucker goes and the energy that's going to come off of that, they say if they are not ready, they will be six months without water. They said if you think Katrina was bad in New Orleans, because people will leave, they will have to leave. And w when will they come back? And how will they come back with all the buildings? So I'm feeling really comfortable sitting over here in Catalina. And this lady said it with such calm and, well, she was a scientist. So... She, she was very cool, and I'm just going, Dr. Doom has arrived, and the other people are saying, no, that's Dr. Dr. Reality. So um, anyway, that was very interesting. There was also discussion about um, er Garcetti wants to do a four-year um, minimum raise plan, minimum wage raise plan, and uh, that had some controversy. What they are trying to do in these mayor's conferences is getting everybody to kind of 
set regional policy. So even the little guys like us, if we're agreeing with the big guy, you know, better in numbers. So it's, since we're all Southern California, this, the more we can work together, the better. Um, they also talked about the water bond, which was great, which we're hearing a lot about, which is on the ballot in November, and hopefully everybody will vote for that. Uh, and we'll, Ben will talk about that later someday about the, we'll be doing some publicity on that and encouraging people to vote for that and the impact it could have on Avalon. Um, and of course the LA Film Company, that was a big deal again, because it's a tax credit for over five years, $330 million a year to help bring film back because every, everybody got lazy and they went to Canada and New York and everywhere else but here. So anyway, that was really good. They also asked who would host the next one and I kind of threw our name in the hat. And so that's something we can discuss to maybe be involved in in three to six months and get all those mayors to come to Catalina because everyone, the majority of our visitors come from Southern California, that's a good group to to buddy with, so um, that was very good. Also, September 26th is the Catalina Film Festival. On, on the 26th, we will be doing a little honoring of Bruce Belland, who um, composed 26 Miles. And the doors will open at six o'clock in the Casino Theater. We're going to do a scroll of, well, I think it's now turned into 40 feet or something. Uh, we're writing cute little quips and. Uh, uh, in honor of the song and impact it's had on other people's lives. There are also, Chuck Lydell will be out and around town. There's going to be something in the paper. So if you want to write a little thing to Bruce Belland, we're going to unfoil it there. We're going to dub him Goodwill Ambassador of Catalina. And that's on September 26th. So, and also, I believe the film festival now is offering half price tickets to Islanders um, for the whole film festival. Is that correct, Jennifer? Jen, did you hear that? Okay, I heard that today. So anyway, that's all, sorry. Okay, let's go. Okay, uh, Mayor, I guess the only other announcement would be that if it's the pleasure of you and the council, we'd like to take item number six, which is on your uh, general business first this evening. That will allow uh, a couple of folks to catch a 7.30 boat. No problem, that's perfect, thank you. And, and could we maybe do that even before uh, oral communication just to get, get that going? Is that, is Let's that okay? Let's do it right you? now. Okay, very sure. good. I'm okay. <coughs> I'm fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, item number six is a uh, request for a letter of support uh, for Avalon Freight Services. Uh, you will recall that this was an item that came to you previously, I think about, uh, I want to say, a month ago. Um, uh, Catalina uh, Freight Services won the contract to provide freight services between uh, the mainland uh, and Avalon. It's going to commence in uh, 2016. As part of that, they need to file an application with the PUC, and they're asking for the council's support in doing that. Uh, I know at the last uh, meeting this was aired, uh, there was a council's direction to learn more about the proposed service, and I believe that uh, Mr. Bombard uh, took uh, all of you uh, over to see the operation and answer your questions. So uh, having met that um, request, he is now back tonight uh, to see if he can get uh, that letter of support from you. He is obviously here as well to speak and answer any questions that you may have. Does anybody have any? Uh, please, come on up. Again, uh, Doug Houghton representing uh, Harley Marine and myself uh, are the partnership that uh, is being put together to operate the new freight service. And again, when we were here last time, uh, I think the, it was the, we felt that it was a need for to bring not only the mayor, but the council, as many people as we could, over and uh, walk them through our proposal. So we've done that over the last month here and are now seeking that letter so that we can try to get our uh, application in by the end of the month. So, any questions you may have, we're happy to answer whatever you may have. Council, questions? No questions. I think one of the things that I was interested in, and I, I appreciate the, the, the walk through the facility and seeing how everything, I can visualize that quite well. Um, I guess one of the things that I was wanting to, to read was the proposal that you had, said, had submitted and also to 
review the application you put into the CPUC. I don't know if that would be prior to its submittal or at the same time. That's just my request, but I don't know what the... I'm, I'm curious, well, the first part of that was wanting to review the proposal. And this is the proposal that they gave to the island company? Yeah. Yeah. And was that, that was certainly we, we, hundreds of pages review, yeah. that I reviewed when I was there. Did you have that same presentation? I had the presentation, yes. Yeah. So that was the, or that was the proposal? Isn't the proposal, isn't the application, dip, the, the proposal, the application different than the slideshow? Well, the slideshow was the proposal we had with the island company and the committee who was put together for this RFP. And then uh, our application to the PUC will be to follow up uh, and follow the guidelines of what we walked you through. Okay, I don't, I don't know other than, okay, not knowing, okay, this is my being new, mm -hmm. not really seeing an application to the PUC ever from anybody mm -hmm. about anything. Um, I think it would be doing due diligence to, to read that to see what it's going to say. I know there's things about rates and whatever, and, and I don't know that that's the only thing that needs to, to be looked at. I would just like to see what those things are. I think it's, you know, this is a big, this is, this is a change for the community of Avalon, and I'm just wanting to make sure, I just think because these are rates that are going to affect our residents of Avalon, I just want to make sure that everything just looks good. I mean, I just think we have the right to do that before it's submitted and attach a letter to something we don't know what it says. I, I think we can safely say that we'll guarantee the rates for two years. That was under the it's a 25 year commitment? 25. I think, yeah. About 10. 10 year with two fives on the back right. of it if we do our job the way we're supposed to do it. Right. So that's the, that's the commitment from the group, that's the RFP. And uh, one thing that may help you feel more comfortable, Mayor, is when we submit our application, you will get a copy of that because you will be one of, the, one of the groups that they send it out to. And there is a chance at that point that if you see something there that you don't like, you can talk to the, to the commission about that through either Scott being the attorney but, but, or whoever. But that is after we have sent a letter and then we go whoops we didn't catch this that just doesn't but what you're sending a letter to is based on the proposal the consultant came out put an rfp the proposals all came in uh th this purveyor was selected to do this business based on the proposal that they gave if at the t and, th and that's what they're asking for a letter of support on is based on the proposal that they've given and the the award of the contract based on that proposal. So at the point that it goes to the PUC, if there's anything different than what the proposal was, then of course, I would hope that we would step up and say, you know, hey, this doesn't, this doesn't match. Well, the proposal I got was, a, was oral and visual. It wasn't in right. writing. So I haven't read anything to see then if it's going to mm -hmm. be different. So when do we do the comparison after it's gone in? I guess I'm just trying to There will to be, be a time, be a period, when this application goes in, where the, it'll be assigned to an ALJ, an acting law judge, and he will read through it, and he will read the whole application to make sure it's in line with what uh, the PUC is looking for, for one, but also within the community, the best right. way to serve the community. And uh, I think at that point, if you see something there that you don't like, you can certainly put in a protest against that. If that's, if that's it just seems you that seems kind of, whoops. Is this the you same know. PUC that <laughs> did approve the tariff for uh, Edison just recently? Different department, probably. It's it's a different division. It's, Excuse me. It's a different division. different division. They, they, it's a different division. Yeah, they're pretty siloed. They, okay. They have different departments. Mm -hmm. Well. Uh, we have any other speakers? Do you have any other questions? Does, does it, should I ask from the public now before, okay. Is there any comments or questions from the public? Thank you.
Hi, Rich Coffee, Kelly and Freightline. Um, Good evening. First, just to answer your question, you file an application and you, when you put it into the PUC. Try to speak up just a little bit. I'm sorry. Bit, That's okay. when, you, when you file an application with the PUC, it's a long document that you will get a copy of, just as Greg suggested. We should get a copy of it as well. Um, at that point, everyone gets to review it and decide if they like it or not, right? So honestly, in my opinion, the request for, you know, for a, providing support to a document that you've never seen is a little premature. Okay, so that's just an answer to your question. But if, if I may, I put together a little letter here that um, I'm gonna give to Ben after the meeting, but I'd like to take a few minutes, if I could, just to read it to the city council. Okay. Can, can Dudley, can you turn up the, uh, the in-room microphone? Am I not? Are you not okay, hearing me very it. well? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is that better? Sure. Thank you. Okay. So the city, the city of Avalon is being asked to support Catalina Express and Harley Marine's takeover of freight services. Not because they want to have any input, for you to have any input on what's best for this critical public service, but because someone finally realized you are one of the last obstacles to overcome. They seem to think that if they give you a fancy presentation, you're just going to go along with supporting a PUC application you've never seen. Okay? The real issue we should be discussing, in my opinion, is not whether you rubber stamp a decision that was made in the back rooms of the island company, but rather, how does the city, not the island company management, think freight service to the community should be provided in the future? All right, so just to be clear here, we're not talking about a restaurant or a spa. Okay? This is a critical decision about the lifeline to the island. It's a critical public utility. It's just like water and it's just like electricity, which everyone in Avalon depends on. How it is provided is the decision for the city government, not a private company. And it's one of the most important decisions this council will ever face with very long-term ramifications. It would be irresponsible and simply an excuse to let any private entity ignore and dictate to the city how this public service will be provided just because they own the land. If the island company was genuinely, genuinely interested in finding the best solution for freight services, it would have involved the community from the start. It would have done so in an open forum to avoid even the whiff of backroom dealings between friends. Instead, it undertook a lengthy private process allowing the city to attend just the final presentations by the competitors. And after those presentations, it even ignored the very little input that was given by the former mayor on behalf of the council, in which he ranked Catalina Express and Harley last, that's right, last of the three finalists. All right. yeah. Here we are today. So the question really is to me, is, is this city council gonna allow that? Are you willing to forfeit your rightful authority on behalf of the community? Are you willing to take responsibility for one of the biggest community decisions without ever evaluating the benefits and the risks of all the potential options? Are you willing to forego the possibility of potentially changing the way freight services are provided altogether? We all know what the easy answer is. No one wants to stand up to the Allen Company. I'm in trouble for being up here tonight, right? Well, but that's not why you were elected. It's imperative that you stand up for the community's best interests, and if you won't do it, who will? The community, the community deserves answers to things like, why didn't the city take the lead? Or why wasn't it invited to? Why was the city's minimal input ignored, and is the city okay with the worst option being the chosen one? If the city were choosing, would it really put the community at risk by choosing an untested provider that has to invest millions of dollars when they're offering the same prices with questionable benefits. Okay? Another question that you should know the answer to is, does the island company or any related entity have a financial position or some other self-serving arrangements with the new venture? Should you be worried about making a big monopoly like the Cat Express even bigger so it can dictate terms just like the island company does now? Does this community want an out-of-state company like Harley, which knows nothing about Catalina, controlling such a critical service? 
Unfortunately, Harley Franco, the owner of Harley, couldn't even be here tonight. He lives in Seattle. Do you want the community to be held hostage to raising of rates with virtually no alternatives for freight or passenger service? Can you trust them given their current rate increase history? And lastly, is change really needed? And if you think it is, why not take the opportunity to completely change the model and allow open competition for freight services? We have no problem earning the business of our customers, and we'd like to think that Catalina Express wouldn't either. So Island Company has been pretty arrogant in this handling of this decision. And blindly accepting it without answers to these and many other questions would send exactly the wrong message, that they can do whatever they want, and they can count on the city government to mechanically endorse it. Given the gravity of the decision, this decision and the risks and your lack of input, the most prudent and responsible choice for the city is to write a letter to the PUC strongly, oppo strongly opposing Catalina Express and Harley's application, if and when it's ultimately submitted. In addition, the city, as is its duty to the public, should take control of how this critical public service will be provided by performing its own evaluation of what is best for the community as a whole. I thank you and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Any yet? Martin Curtin, Curtin Maritime. Um, we were involved in the RFP process from the very beginning. Uh, we were one of the three finalists, obviously, Bombard Harley, the existing provider, and ourselves. Um, we were very, very excited about our, uh, our solutions for Catalina's freight problems. We felt that we had a, a very intimate knowledge of, uh, of the dealings, day-to-day -day life in Catalina growing up here. Um, it very much disappointed me that the city did not take uh, a more proactive approach, but ultimately this is your guys' opportunity. I think it's an extremely important for the council to, to really understand what their options are. Um, we've had monopoly in freight in, at 2016 will be 40 years. You guys have one opportunity to make a change. Um, ultimately, myself and my company are here to support the city and, and the citizens of Avalon in whatever change they want whether it's us or someone else. But I think that it's definitely in the best interest of the citizens of Avalon and the day-to-day -day users to fully understand what the options are, not just getting one proposal from a finalist that is selected by somebody that, in my opinion, should not be making the selection in the first place. That's all. Thank you. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear, four of them. <coughs> Literally, oh, dear. There were four of them, but just one. one. Two, there. three, four, five. five. Any other comments? Six. <laughs> my um. Anybody else call me? Um, my take on it is uh, right off the bat, Mr. Coffee. I, I do know, and we we are well aware of the consequences and how important this is. We know who we deal we're dealing with, and we know what we're dealing with right now. It's coming to us, but we do appreciate the input. We also know that the, um, the Catalina Express has uh, been an expert service to the island for a long time. So I will acknowledge that. And I will also acknowledge your service to our Catalina Island has also been outstanding as well. And, and the curtains play a big role in this island as well. And there's a lot of other people that are on this list. This is just coming to us as it is, okay? So it's in our, it's, the ball's in our court here, okay? So we know what's, we, we have a good idea of what's going on, but it's nice to hear some experts come in and um, give us some more insight about what we're gonna be dealing with in the, into the near future. Um, we haven't made a choice yet on what we're gonna do. Yes, we could have taken a more proactive um, approach to this, but uh, this was something that was on the table before half of us up here were elected into office, okay? So, um, this is not going to slip by us like on accident. And we know very well who we're dealing with when we're dealing with the Santa Catalina Island Company. That's, qu that's quite uh, evident in um, you know, a lot of the things that have been on the table in the, in the um, near, um, in recent past and distant past. With that said, um, anybody else like to say anything? Council, much pleasure. 
Um, I will say that I had the ability to read all three of the proposals. I attended one of the presentations. I couldn't attend the other two because they were Holy. unflexible in the timing. Yes, I, I, read, I read all three of them. I attended uh, Martin's presentation. Um, actually, it's been a monopoly on the freight to the island since about 1919. The island company carried it through on the steamer until they established freight lines, and um, which was in the 60s. And so one guy's had it since the 60s. Um, I looked on the, all three of the proposals, and I saw as is, and a couple new ways of doing things. Um, as is, I'm not sure is the best path for us to go forward. And the two new ways of doing things, which is basically cutting down your short side expense on the mainland for freight receiving makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's big bucks. And uh, both Greg and Martin had a, a plan to put a smaller freight receiving facility on the mainland and load the barge or landing craft over there, bring them to, and un unload them in Pebbly Beach. Martin had an idea about using, not using the freight line per se, just using the ramp and finding another place in Avalon to construct the freight handling facility over here. That struck me a little bit wrong because there's not a lot of property available. <laughs> um, I mean, the city doesn't own a lot of property, there's not a lot of property available. And, and of the three proposals, I thought that Mr. Bombard's proposal was an appropriate proposal. And I don't see any problems having us issue a letter in advance of us seeing the application. If the application, when the application does come out, if there's stuff that's in it that wasn't in the proposals, which I forwarded on to Mr. Harvey so we can forward it to the other council members, um, we entirely within our right to remove our letter of support and to file a letter of protest. Well, at a minimum, you're awfully quiet. At a minimum, if the proposal is going to Ben, I would like to read it. Okay. And, um, and I, I, it's probably just me. I would just as soon wait to see the application of the CPUC instead of having to go, oh, whoops, and, and make a change. Because then it looks like, oh, well, we really weren't paying attention. I don't know. That's just me. I've never done this before. Well, what about, what about I forward to Ben all three proposals mm -hmm. from last year, whenever it was. Um, why didn't he distribute that to us? And why don't we get a chance to review those proposals and then come back at the next council meeting and either go up or down? Well, uh, it seems like in the RFP, it said that those rates were going to be withheld. You three gentlemen are in the room, or four. Seemed as though those rates said something about those rates being held for four to five years or something. I don't know. Help me out. I don't know what they said. Only two years. But it was five and four years over the term. Four years from the date we committed to that, two years in the term. So it's a four year freeze. Okay, hold, Martin? Just now. Oh, and you had put in for five year keeping the prices the same? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it's. <laughs> right, right, right. Yes, yes. And I'm sorry, but this isn't supposed to be like a big old dialogue back and forth. But if I have questions, if we have questions, um, we can definitely ask. Ultimately, in my opinion, the RFP process is flawed. Okay? When you read the RFP that's issued from the island company, it's specifically tailored to the island company. And when we respond to an RFP, we respond to it in kind. We answer the questions that are directly drawn out in the RFP. So going back and reading the original proposals, ultimately, we were working with Mayor Kennedy and, and everybody else trying to explain that, listen, ultimately for us, an integrated freight solution goes way beyond what, what we're presenting to the island company. And ultimately, we're answering the island company's questions in their RFP. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, again, this is a, a very involved process, and, and I understand why you guys, you know, would... You know, or, or why the city at the time wasn't super keen to get involved because ultimately it's it, it's a very very long drawn out process. Hardesty LLC was the consulting group that did it. Um, they did a, a very good job as far as putting it together. But ultimately, all of the the questions and all of the driving points are coming from a third party private interest. So at that point, in my opinion, the, the first step would probably be to read the RFP. Mm -hmm. So that way you can see 
if in fact it's answering the questions that you guys want answered. And we have copies of the RFP. We'd be more than happy to give them to you. Ben's got a copy of the RFP. Ben's got a copy. But I have one. In, in my opinion, fairness, that I've would just be kind it. of the first logical step for you guys to just even get comfortable. And if you're comfortable with the way that the RFP set out, then great. Then the proposals mm -hmm. will apply just fine. No. Okay, thank you. I've read the RFP, and I, I do believe that it reached out to quite a bit more than just the island company in general. Um, that was my take on it. And... I would love to say that if my five closest friends and, my, and myself could have made it work, I would have loved to have done a cooperative freight line to bring our own freight over and eliminate you know, the, the situations that we're sometimes in now, but it doesn't pay to do that. The other situation you run into is where are you gonna land? The only place to land is on island company property, and if they don't allow you to land, you can't you, you can't run the business. So if anybody else in town were to want to start their own freight company, anybody's welcome to do their own freight company. However, there's no place to land. So the, the keeper of the land is the island company and it's their right to do what they want to do with their land. And I, I really felt like they had gone out extensively for an RFP, looked at several different options, narrowed it down, and I guess even if we were to say as a council that we didn't agree with the current, or with the, the proposal that was selected, there's not really much that we could do because it's the island company's decision as to who they're going to lease the property to on the Catalina side. So, I, I mean, I don't, I don't really understand how we can, could even make a difference if that was the pleasure of the council, which I'm not sure that that's where we're at. Sure. Since you asked the question, I guess now people can respond, <laughs> come up and chat. Yeah, I mean, you can. Um, well, first of all, again, back to, you know, why wouldn't the island company want the city intimately involved in the process in the first place. I don't know. I don't think anybody could have a real good answer to that. But to your point, they own the land. Well, mm -hmm. if they're not willing to work with you, then, you know, honestly, it, one of your only defenses is through the PUC. You can basically say to the PUC, no, we don't think this is how it should happen, and we're not going to, you know, we're not going to support this ever until we have a say as the city government on how this public utility is provided, right? I mean, again, just because they own the land, think about it. If Edison, mm -hmm. say Edison's had a lease on their land and it expired, would the city not be involved in choosing who the provider of water and electricity is? Even if, if the island company owned the land? Absolutely, right? So to, to, to somehow pretend that just because it's the freight line and it's somehow different, it really isn't. It is a public utility. We're governed by the Public Utilities Commission, just like Edison, and the public should have a say. And, you know, honestly, who could possibly object to the idea that the city controlled the lease, got a 30-year lease or a 40-year lease from the island company, and then decided what it wanted to do with that land, right? It could be a revenue-generating source, potentially, for the city. But, you know, bottom line is the city, as the representative of the entire community, could decide. You know, but to your point, if they don't want to play ball, there, there are a lot of, rep, you know, remedies here. Some of them way more expensive than anybody in this room would want to go after. You know, but I'm sure your attorney over there could tell you a variety of them. You know, so, I, honestly, I think that's a bit of an excuse. I, I, I really do. If, if, this is such an important public service to the community. And again, whether the freight line does it or not, you know, at the end of the day, I'll go on and I'll do something else, right? That's, that's not really what this is about. But if, if nobody's going to stand up and say something, if you guys think it's the best idea, you know, I'll say goodbye. But, you know, I'm trying to bring it to your attention as the representatives of the community that this is something you really need to decide and not let just get, get it decided for you. Thank you. I do believe the tides are changing. Scott? Oh, no, I'm just okay. <laughs> I do believe the tides are changing. Um, we do have land. 
We have them all. Okay, that's land. That's ours. Okay, we have options. Um, it's also my understanding that we've got some water issues as well that are on the table. And whoever supplies this service is going to be possibly bringing over emergency water if we ever get into a predicament. We're trying to figure that out right now. That's a big thing. The Island Company, Edison, the Public Utilities Commission, they're making some decisions now that are not in the best interest of the people of Avalon. That's something that I really would like to understand a little better before I make any decisions. It's my understanding that the, that the barges at Avalon Freight Services is, is, is um, um, going to bring over. They're going to have water um, holding containers. Uh, they're also going to be bringing over fuel as well. I mean, we're looking at possibly um, implementing some type of solar systems into our um, into our system into our uh, grid to offset the uh, into, uh, to offset the uh, the massive amounts of diesel fuel that we use every year to to power our not just our electricity but also our um, desalination systems. This is something that we're thinking about seriously too, and this is something that's big time on my mind. And I don't want to just give this away in one foul swoop to the island company or to anybody else that might be in business with the island company. I'm not, I would like to do business with the island company. I'd like to understand them a little better and, and, and be in some kind of a partnership with them. But they're making it really, really difficult for us at this point right now. It's just something for, that I wanted to get out and I wanted people to think about. I think we all know that this uh, service has been, as Ole spoke earlier, the island company ran the freight services since they started the island back, or started carrying passengers to the island as well as freight back in 1920s. And, and they did a good job and they built it up to the point where when Jack Finney took it over, he did a good job and he's done a good job for 40 plus years. We came in with a different outlook on it. We came in with a different scheme on how we can help provide and I think ours was one of the only solutions for, well, not solutions, but talked about bringing water. We talked about a new piece of equipment. We talked about bringing, uh, having the ability to bring over 200,000 gallons of water per trip to the island. So, I mean, I think that the process that has been played out in front of you here tonight um, was not flawed. It was, it was, they went out, they spent a lot of time and a lot of money to find an independent group to come in, be the consultant, take this thing on, that's what they do in life. And I think they tried to load up the group that uh, was doing the analysis of it uh, as well as they thought they could. You know, again, this council wasn't all here. Oli was here. Uh, the mayor was there. I have no idea where the mayor voted and what place he put anybody in. Apparently Rich does. I, I don't know. But what I do know is we came in with an honest proposal, and I like to say that our proposal had the community thought out in it very well. And that I think that the accommodation for the general public as well as the community for being able to get this service as well as the other services they need to get here is well thought out. And I think that was the part of the proposal that again, we wanted to share with you because you didn't get to be a part of the process. So, you know, you got to do what you think is right, but there will be time if you don't like what we're doing at the PUC. There's certainly time uh, while it's on the calendar to protest it if you don't like what we write down. But we did do an honest proposal. It's a good proposal for the community, and we'd hope to get your support. Thank you. Thank you. Action by council. As, as I said, we could have Ben distribute the RFP and the three proposals to everybody electronically and then reconsider it at the next meeting, or we could take a vote on something tonight. I'm easy. And Richard will be back next week, uh, next council meeting. So we have full council to, to act on it. I'll make a motion to request a letter of support for Avalon Freight Services to go to the CPUC with their application package. I'll second it. Comment? 
Been moved and seconded. Call for the vote. Councilmember Hernandez is the light. Says Cassidy. <laughs> I put, I well, I have Olsen. three eyes then. <laughs> it says Cassidy. No, I, I know yours is yours is lit, but Hernandez's is lit also. Phantom vote. <laughs> How many votes? Anyway, I would say vote? there's five. There's five votes right there right now. Yes. Oh. Cassidy, Hernandez, and Olson, which I know is not correct. So there's two eyes: Councilmember Cassidy and Councilmember Olson, and two no's: Marshall and Samson, and the ghost of Richard is absent. <laughs> ghost of Richard. I don't know why. Yeah. So thank you very much. And it looks as though the direction will be we'll be reviewing at the next council meeting, after, or after everybody's been able to review the RFP. Back to the consent. No, now we got to go back to oral communication. Oral communication. Okay, now we're going to skip back to oral communication. Oh, thank you. Oral communications. Any? Well, thank you to council for giving such a good rundown on Oktoberfest. So that'll save me from that announcement and. We'll see you on the beach October 25th for that fundraiser. Um, but then I did want to just a quick reminder for Fall Fest. So that's October 16th. That's a Thursday evening. Uh, live music on the stage, food and drinks downtown. If your local club or class or business or service club hasn't gotten their booth yet, they still can. The application is online at cityofavalon.com. It's a very minimal fee for a booth, and it's a great way to raise money for your group. And uh, it's from 5 to 9, so we'll see you 5 to 9 on the 16th, which is a Thursday, on Front Street. That's pumpkins, right? And pumpkin patch oh on the beach. God, yeah. Holy God. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, it's coming up. All right, thanks. Thank you. Jen? I mean, uh, <laughs> Jordan? <laughs> the J&J &J show? <laughs> Jordan Monroe, Management Aid. I just want to remind everybody that the grace period for vehicle noise testing ends September 30th. So starting October 1st, we will be ticketing for expired city permits for all the vehicles that received a temporary permit that didn't pass noise testing. If you're still outstanding, you can bring your vehicle to City Hall uh, Monday morning from 9 to noon, uh, this upcoming Monday and the following Monday. Uh, so the last two Mondays of the month before the 30th. Uh, we will be testing. If you have any comments or concerns, you can get a hold of me up here at City Hall. Um, if you can't make those Mondays, um, otherwise, um, October 1st, we'll start taking it. And just real quick, update me and the council in the town the exporting of junkers well that's uh there's a separate uh, effort going on right now with code enforcement where they are tagging abandoned vehicles um and they've been going through ticketing or tagging abandoned vehicles uh to notice them that they will be uh, impounded off the island um, so that process i know is um going on at the moment do we and have the, the the vehicle in which to get rid of them is that already in place that I don't know. Yes, yes, we do. It, it, it's it's a, and, and I can give you an update in this week's uh, Friday update. But basically, they, they already have their ticket home. Uh, we are going to start the whole um, mass uh, process here. Um, and forgive me, I don't have all the details in front of me, but it's it's underway. In fact, I know that Audra, before I came into this meeting, wanted to give me a brief update, and I just didn't get the chance to get to her. Yeah. No. yeah. Excellent. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. All righty. So let's move on to the consent calendar. Okay, Mayor, on tonight's consent calendar, there are five items. Um, you have actions from the August 19th meeting, several sets of warrants as we uh, skipped the first meeting in September, as you well know, as we were all at the League of California Cities, but we also have some expenditures from the prior fiscal year. And for that reason, there is a stack of uh, warrants for your review. And I believe I've met with the most of you with questions on them in advance of the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that would be it. I can, I can certainly read through all the amounts of the warrants, but there's a lot of them, and so I don't know if you want me to read a bunch of numbers to you. I think we're fine. 
to consider a motion. Does anyone want to remove anything? Is there a motion to remove anything? <laughs> Does anybody like to remove any of those numbers? No, thank you. <laughs> okay. Public. It looks good to me. Okay. Public. And the public, do you want to con you want to comment on any of Chris's numbers here today? <laughs> no? Okay. Move staff on one to five. It's been moved. Moved to, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, no further comment. Let's see if Richard Call votes again. Vote. Four eyes, one absent, Council Member Hernandez. Uh, Denise, his, his button was stuck, so it's fixed now. Okay. Item number seven. Yes, item number seven is an ordinance amending the municipal code regarding reasonable accommodations, and our planning director, Amanda Cook, is available to give you a, a brief uh, staff report on this. Thank you, Amanda. Um, as we've done in the past, these are one of the um, continuing code updates that we're doing as part of our housing element certification. And the um, Fair Housing Act, as amended in 1988, and the American with Disabilities Act require that we have the opportunity in our code for people to ask for a reasonable accommodation to vary from our code should they need to put a handicap ramp in the setback or they need a little more space to put in a uh, lift at their house and it won't fit in the normal standard. So this change in the code just allows them an opportunity to request that accommodation from us. And that's what this is. And this is required by the state of California. So that means it's probably not good. <laughs> well, it's actually required by, it's a federal, federal law that California is implementing as part of when we update the general plan and the housing element, we are required to make certain that we have uh, done any tweaks to our policy to comply with the current law. And that's what the, the most of the changes here are uh, ministerial, but we have uh, added a specific uh, section that, um, that um, developers or people that are building um, homes, um, they have the ability to uh, request a reasonable um, accommodation. That's what the law is. We've just uh, put that into our code. I just made a comment to Ben earlier about the, it says the city shall make available to all interested individuals the name, address, and whatever of our ADA coordinator, so. And that is Denise. Yes, and then so when we get our social media policy and get all that kind of stuff going, it'd be nice to include that because it's also for like braille and things like that at council meetings and things like that. Pleasure, so, okay. council. I'll um, move to introduce and waive all readings of an ordinance amending the Avalon Municipal Code, Section One Eight. Dot zero one through one dash eight dot zero seven regarding reasonable accommodations. Is there any comments from? No. Okay. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved to second. Call for the vote. Four ayes and one absent. Council Member Hernandez. Item number eight. Yes, Mayor. Item number eight is a classification and compensation study. Uh, it's a professional services agreement. Y you may recall uh, a few meetings back, a few months back, we uh, asked you to allow us to go out for a proposal to obtain some um, uh, proposals for class and compensation studies. Uh, we received um, at least six, maybe seven, uh, from a number of very reputable firms. Uh, class and comp Class and compensation studies are required according to the city's personnel rules. We have not done one since 2006. Um, as you probably know, I'm very excited about being able to embark in this process. It's going to allow us to take a look at our, our classifications, our workforce, the jobs that we're doing, um, figure out where we need to make some adjustments. Um, it's something that the employee associations are also very excited about. Tonight, um, Gina Schuchard has a brief staff report, and we um, are recommending that you allow us to enter an agreement with Coff and Associates for this purpose. You'll note from the staff report they came in right around the middle. Uh, they have excellent references. They've worked in cities of smaller size, among um, other areas. We have a, 
uh, a brief presentation from Georg from Coffin Associates as well. Uh, we're going to spare uh, Councilmember Cassidy having the projector on her head. That's why it's <laughs> just in paper right here tonight. So maybe with that, if I could ask Gina to come up just to give us a brief uh, presentation and then Georg, if you want to run through your uh, presentation following. Thank you. I think Ben summarized most of the agenda report. <laughs> and um, just wanted to talk about the qualifications of Coffin Associates. They had the necessary experience, specifically with coastal communities. I was really impressed with uh, the, the varied ones are currently working with the city of Santa Barbara right now, uh, who also has a harbor uh, department. And also they have excellent references uh, throughout the process, highlighting the understanding of city-related issues and employee relations. And I know you saw the proposal. It was thorough and also cost effective. They were in the middle to low area. The um, companies that were of a lower uh, bid nature did business, never, one never did business in the state of California, and the other one was more education based, really not many cities at all. So um, I'd like to present Georg Kramer, and he's going to give a brief presentation on what a class compensation, classification and compensation review is. Can, can I just quickly interrupt? I, I have a fan right outside this door, and I cannot hear hardly anything that anybody's saying. It's here. working. Well, no, leave the fan, please. Oh, please leave the fan. <laughs> that being said, could anybody coming to the mic, could you please make sure that you're speaking right into the mic, because I can only pick up every couple words. Sure. I hope this is better. I have a pretty loud voice usually, so I usually do okay. I will try to keep it as, as brief as possible since I think um, the meeting's already going on a little, a little bit longer than you might have expected. I'm not sure. Um, I'm just glad I'm not following the firefighters because that was pretty exciting. Um, and we'd like to hear your presentation. Yes, uh, I, I wanted to tell you a little bit about our, um, our firm. Uh, I think we had a great introduction. Thank you for that. Um, I'll just say that uh, we have 30 years of experience uh, doing classification compensation studies for uh, similar organizations. Uh, we of course understand that the city of Avalon is very unique in, in many ways. Um, I think our experience with other cities um, will be a benefit to you as well as um, a, kind of a niche that we have with uh, special districts for example uh, that are also often very unique and provide very unique services. One of the things I'd like to point out about our methodology that we have found is very successful and that is that as you can see on the second slide of your presentation is that um, we want to make sure that the process is very objective, very transparent and includes all of the stakeholders in the process. Uh, the City Council, of course, being one of the stakeholders, as well as management and human resources, but very importantly also uh, the employees and, and their representatives. And we want to make sure that they feel that they, are get ha that they have a voice in the process uh, and are being heard and that their questions are answered and their concerns are addressed. Um, if you want to flip to the next slide, you see a, uh, it's a fairly long list of, of other um, similar cities that we've worked with that are either coastal cities or um, kind of tourist based cities. Um, I'm not going, going to read all of them to you but please uh, review them at, at your leisure. Um, I'll, I'll move right on to uh, one of the things that I wanted to um, share with you in terms of the goals of a classification compensation study and that is uh, that it is best practice in human resources that you have a job classification system that is up-to-date and current and has up-to-date and current job descriptions that reflect the work that's currently being performed by your workforce. Uh, and the reason that's so important is because many other human resources uh, policies, systems and procedures tie right into job classification. Uh, that's uh, your recruitment process, your performance management process, uh, training, development, uh, uh, some legal compliance, as well as uh, what, what most of your employees are going to be interested in, um, your compensation system. And, and having up-to-date and current job descriptions is so critical because it allows us to help you identify and set appropriate and fair compensation levels for the work that's being done here. Um, the classification process itself, itself is fairly uh, uh, complex and involved. I'll just mention really quickly that employees, we will, we will ask employees to fill out what we call uh, position description questionnaires that ask many questions about their jobs, help them describe to us what the work is. 
Those will be reviewed by their supervisors to make sure that there is alignment between employees and their, their supervisors and managers. We will also come back and interview each employee to ask any follow-up questions we may have. Uh, from, that, from there, we will make classification recommendations, including updating your job descriptions. And again, your, your, the employees of the organization will have ample opportunity to be involved in that process. Moving on to the compensation piece, um, that is, um, of course, uh, the, the biggest interest to most of the stakeholders. Uh, there are three elements that we look at when we uh, do compensation studies. Number one most important is to determine which uh, organizations to compare you to, how to define your labor market uh, that we will survey to set appropriate salary levels. Um, also, uh, just determining which classifications to survey, and then uh, this being a total compensation study, so we're going to survey uh, salaries and benefits to also determine which benefits to survey. Um, the data collection is done by our own staff in-house. We don't just send out questionnaires to the participating organizations. We do all of the, the analysis ourselves uh, to make sure that you have the most accurate and current data. And from there, I'll just say that uh, that data is what we will look at to uh, help you set appropriate salary levels. We will look at the market data, but we will also do an internal relationship analysis to ensure that the value of the work that's being performed here at the city is appropriately compensated. Any um, questions? Yeah. When you do your market survey, are you going to survey Avalon businesses along with other municipalities? Or is it going to be just Avalon businesses or is it going to be just other municipalities? You know, there's, uh, there, th this, some of this will depend on stakeholder feedback, and, and that's a great example of how we go about our processes. We, will, we want to hear from the various stakeholders in terms of what you, the city council, your, your management, and your workforce think um, appropriate organizations would be to compare you to. Uh, certainly, uh, th we will include other cities in this process, uh, most likely other coastal cities that, that are somewhat similar to you in terms of the services they provide. Um, I understand that you, uh, you are potentially considering maybe looking at the county of LA because that's, uh, you know, that's where we may find some matches for your fire services, most likely for some of the other services that you provide. Um, I do understand that you are in competition with some of the businesses here on the island. Uh, we can certainly consider including private sector data um, it is someone sometimes challenging to do that for various reasons. One of them, and what the most prominent being that many private sector businesses simply will not share their data with us because they don't have to. And so that is sometimes a challenge. Um, I had a question. Is it possible to, I noticed that the, the city manager and the city and the chief administrative officer, city clerk are not in the study. Is it possible to, if it's the pleasure of the council, include the chief administrative officer in there? Yes, uh, it's, it's, it's it would be fine by us. I know certainly some wiggle room in terms of, you know, the scope of work that we put in our proposal and how many classifications we'll review. So if, if there is strong interest in doing that, we can certainly do that without. I don't know, council, what's your pleasure? I'm, I'm just a thought. I'm easy. I think there could be some value in that. I think there is, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Take some of that stuff off your plate. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, if that's out. okay with the council and, and Ben. Yeah, we're leaving out okay. a right hand. Was there any particular reason that? Uh, Typically the executive positions, so to speak, are excluded. Um, Denise and I are, you know, running a small organization, so I think we kind of chafe at that. Mm -hmm type of exclusion because we're all working folks here but you know that's that's just historically what's done but we could certainly include her position and I think part of my reasoning for that is because we know we see a lot of what she does and I'm and there's a lot of hats there just as Ben has lots of hats he, he's got the biggest hat on the head but but uh, 
to see what's done and see if some of those things can't go elsewhere so that she can get some of those other big things done. You know, I just, I understand a lot of that is city clerk stuff, but I just, I don't know, I just would feel, just me. Are you okay? Um, I did have another dumb question. Two of our positions are filled by interim contract employees <laughs> as opposed to employee employees. Yeah. Uh, would we We still have position descriptions and, okay, and so we and we certainly have other folks um, that are working within the organization and, and might not be working within the organization that might be willing to, to speak to that to provide some, some background. So I feel, I feel comfortable, not, not to mention those that are filling in the interim capacity, certainly have worked in other municipal organizations and have a good mm -hmm. background as to what the job should be. So I feel, I feel pretty confident with that. So we'd still be encompassing those positions. Okay, good. We, we, well, okay, just, just to be brutally uh, plain spoken about this. So rather than compare and, and look for a comp for, let's say an interim chief financial officer, we would be looking for a comp for a finance director. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then what about, what about, and I know Gina's spoken to you about this before, but so the places we have holes don't really come out in the comp study. No, For those, example, those, the, you're do, you do HR. It'll come out. Yeah. This part, part, of, part of the beauty of this type of thing is you do find your gaps, you do find your okay. duplications, you do find but there, but deficiencies. There, but there won't be salaries for those folk for example, if HR was, you know, if we had an HR person, are we going to be do, doing something that's HR risk management type thing to know what we need we, to fill, or how do we? We okay, I think that and two just things, but a couple, couple things, but I think we can speak to both of them. So we, we can certainly one of, one of the deficiencies that may be noted is that hey, you you really would benefit from somebody in a dedicated HR function, let's say if that's part time or full time. Okay, um, separate from that. Um, th this council has provided me with direction to come back to you with a proposal for HR services or, or a position which I am planning on doing okay. and I'd like to do that next month. Okay. Th does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. And those HR services though will have some kind of So in other words, th this, this study I think will help us identify, hey, we, we need somebody performing these types of services. Right. Currently the following positions are <laughs> doing this work uh, in, in lieu of having a single person that would be doing right. that. And maybe in other s small cities that are that are similar, that's a typical thing. Or maybe they find, hey, this is atypical, and maybe that's part of one of your problems is you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Does this does this any of this get down to how uh, you see that we're talking about compensation? Is it, have you ever had a situation where uh, people are being overcompensated, and how on earth do you tell them that hey, you're being overcompensated, and we're going to draw back your your I mean, does that ever happen? Um, he doesn't I've have got, to say that. <laughs> yeah. I've got two answers uh, for that. Y yes, it, it does happen that, that the market survey may show that somebody's salary range is above the market. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been my experience in, in all the years that I've done this work that, that um, public agencies typically do not actually reduce someone's salary, <laughs> but they would uh, what's called red circle or, or free, basically freeze the salary or wire rate the salary in place until the market catches up. Right. Uh, but of course that is the city council's um, you know, decision to, to decide on how to, to deal with those kinds of situations. <laughs> uh, there's oh. also one concept I'd like to mention is that we, when we survey, we survey the body of work that's being performed and we survey the, the, set, the overall salary levels. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily look at um, you know, Jane Doe and what she's currently making in this position. So we're separating the individual in the job from the actual job. And so there, there are some implementation recommendations that we can certainly help the city with. Okay, that was just kind of an off-wall question. But, but however, if I could just interject real quick, council member. So yes. if you obviously only have one person who's filling a classification, <laughs> it becomes pretty evident that maybe you know what we're talking about when you're, when you're working with that one job, right? Absolutely, yeah. um, <laughs> which is fine. I just uh, that's just a question that, yeah. that people would probably be asking mm -hmm. themselves. Um, and also, aside from all this money stuff or a compensation, this kind of thing, isn't the job of a human resources uh, uh, company and officer to rally the troops to get people in good uh, spirits to to get your uh, 
to get our staff and our workforce working for us and, and optimistic and, and, and better in tune with what their jobs are and, and getting everybody pats on the back and thumbs up and fighting for us? Is that what this is all about? Uh, well, from my perspective, I, I, I would certainly say that HR, you know, can certainly play a role in, in with, you know, when it comes to employee morale and, and, and you know, putting on, you know, doing events and, and, and activities for, for team building and whatnot. My role in this process is to help you um, evaluate the, the governing body to kind of validate, you know, where are you compared to the labor market? Are you paying competitive compensation to your workforce? Are you potentially running into problems, um, attracting and retaining highly qualified workforce because we, you know your compensation levels are maybe too low. Uh, so it's our, it would be my role in this process to help you understand where you are compared to your labor market, uh, depending on who you're competing with, and then helping you set compensation levels that will keep you competitive with the market. Very good. That helps me understand that a little better, and I'm sure some of the people in the audience as well. Thank you. And You're when, welcome. if this contract is signed, when does it take effect? I mean, when would you be starting work? I think we're trying to set some dates for next week, so oh, <laughs> we're, we're okay. right on it. Okay. Right. <clears throat> and how long do you think the process is? It's usually it takes about four months or so, I would say, okay. for this size organization. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Answer my question. Hmm. Comments from the audience? Okay. Council, what's your pleasure? Um, I make a motion to um, approve classification and compensation study professional services agreement with Kauf uh, and Associates. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Move to second. Call for the vote. Four ayes and Councilmember Hernandez absent. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Both you. We'll be seeing you. Okay, Mayor. Item number nine is um, a discussion regarding the status of our um, state of local emergency uh, proclamation. Um, this is in. Uh, the aftermath of the impact of Hurricane um, Marie on the island. Um, as you know, we have been assessing damage. We've been working with key island stakeholder, stakeholders trying to find out what the impact was to them. We have been reaching out to our insurance pool provider. We have been working closely with the uh, county office of emergency management, the state office of emergency services. Uh, it has encompassed every single city uh, department. Um, I really got to thank uh, Jordan Monroe, who is um, spearheaded this effort, uh, took it on uh, very willingly. And so um, we're at a junction now where we need this body to um, determine whether to continue our state of local emergency or to cease that. And so Jordan is going to come to the podium to give you a real brief, brief, <laughs> brief. <laughs> It's a riff. It's brief. Uh, brief. Brief update as to where we are and, and what you should consider, consider as you make this determination. Uh, so what we've done is uh, after the um, proclamation declaring the state of emergency on September 2nd, um, we've been moving forward, as Ben said, with the OEM, uh, who then has reached out to the governor's office. Uh, they have our paperwork, so that it's on their desk. They're aware of it. Uh, the next step for us is we have our um, city's insurance company uh, coming out to do an assessment, an initial assessment, to determine uh, the extent and coverage. Um, once we get that done, which is going to occur first step this Thursday, uh, we will have a comprehensive um, understanding of the impact on city infrastructure. Uh, that portion doesn't include any of the private businesses or private land. Um, with that information, we can then move forward uh, giving our um, update report to the state. Uh, they will write an official report um, after coming down and doing an inspection themselves. Um, and so that timeline is still kind of to be determined. It's dependent upon us getting our first in, um, insurance assessment, and then it'll get moved on. Uh, we are still taking information from private businesses and uh, private landowners that were affected by Hurricane Marie. 
um, to see what avenues we can pursue to assist them as well. Um, but it doesn't necessarily come from the OES uh, and the state. Uh, the OES, if we do get anything, it is uh, reimbursable. So we still have to put out the work and then they would uh, give us the funding afterwards if they were to determine anything. And they don't fund anything that's covered by insurance, which is why we have to go through. They what, I'm sorry? They do not cover anything that's covered by insurance. Oh. So that's why we have to go through these initial steps first. Uh, the recommendation to us uh, from the county OEM was to keep the state of emergency open um, until we get some determinations from the state. Um, so we are kind of going to continue to uh, watch this, move forward with it, and take the next necessary steps. But at this time, um, we recommend that we just kind of keep the state of emergency open as we're going through the process until we start uh, getting everything with the uh, I's dotted and T's crossed and laying it out. Okay. And just so you know, from the legal perspective, the statute on this requires that uh, this, that the council consider this at the first council meeting um, after um, the emergency. So this is that. And then you will probably be having this um, at every council meeting until the, in, until we're ready to declare the state of emergency over. Okay. Questions, comments, comments from the audience? Yeah, I think this is a good idea to keep this going, absolutely. Because we're discovering that more things are actually being damaged and uh, we got another hurricane coming through tonight. Yeah, I right. mean, to, it's, it's expected to hit us tonight and I'm sure the Harbor Master might have some um, information that, to share with us on that, but I'm sure we're a little more prepared because that last one snuck up on us. This one uh, was a stage three at its, at its uh, strongest point, but um, you know, you never know. And we, uh, uh, so after the last incident with Hurricane Marie, the following weekend, you know, we had another s surge potential. Uh, so we did conduct a sit stat report, which was requested by the county OEM, um, which kind of gave updates to make sure that no additional damage was occurred or to keep track of any additional damages or incidents that occurred due to these subsequent events. Um, so as future hurricanes, as things are kind of blown around town, you know, we're definitely keeping our eye on it to stay on top of what does occur when and how. Move to adopt resolution 14.5? Actually. 14.5? No, this, the, you would not ad adopt this resolution. This, this resolution would be to terminate it, but we have to have this. No action needed. No, there's no action needed. No action needed. Oh, okay. We don't want to act. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. Oh, okay. Successor agency. Do we want to go into the housing okay. authority? Or do we want to take the last item as the successor agency? Successor agency, yeah. Successor agency? Mayor, does that sound acceptable? Do the successor agency item at this point? Well, should we do the hospital board to get it off over there? Whatever, oh, no, your, whatever your pleasure is. No, the closed session is. That's going to be. That's the housing. Oh, that's the other one. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, yes, keep on going. Okay, so we're going to move to the city of Avalon acting as the successor agency. Uh, this is item number 10 on your agenda. This is the infamous uh, ROP schedule, everyone's uh, beloved item. And I know that uh, the majority of you probably spent some time with Elizabeth Hull from our city attorney's office today. She's very knowledgeable in this area. So uh, rather than make a fool of myself, I'm going to turn this over to Elizabeth at this point. Thanks. Well, that's a change. Thank you. Uh, so before you this evening is your recognized obligation payment schedule. As uh, the city manager mentioned, I met with a number of you today and went through it. Uh, it's a paper processing item at this point. It reflects the bills that need to be paid by the successor agency in January through June of next year. We have to submit it to the successor agency, then your oversight board and the Department of Finance. Once it's approved by the Department of Finance, it'll be referred to the county and on January 2nd, the county will write us a check to cover the outstanding costs. So we have the funds available to pay the successor agency's bills next year. Okay. Questions from the audience? We will defer to Elizabeth. Okay, no questions? Being that. Council, what's your pleasure? I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution approving uh, the recognized obligation payment schedule for the six month fiscal period beginning January 1, 2015, and ending June 30, 2015. 
Okay. Is there a second? Second. Be moved and seconded. No further comment. Call for the vote. Four ayes, one absent. Council Member Hernandez. Thank you. Okay, Mayor, you have a hospital board and the housing authority this evening as well. Yeah. Okay. Do we adjourn the other one or just kind of keep it open? No, we're gonna, gonna keep it open because we have the closed session. session. Okay. Well, I'd like to call the order of the Avalon Municipal Hospital Board of Trustees. That's not you. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what flowed so eloquently. I have one. My, oh, you do. Sorry. Roll call. Trustee can we Cassidy. Wait, can we rewind the tape and start <laughs> over? <laughs> Trustee Cassidy. Here. Trustee Marshall. Here. Trustee Sampson. Here. Chairman Olson. Here. <laughs> Announcements, Mr. Harvey. I have none. <gasps> Written communications, Mr. Harvey. None that I'm aware of. Presentations, anybody? None. Oral communication. Anybody in the audience want to speak to something not on the agenda? Limit your discussion to three minutes. Just run into the podium. Running. Consent calendar. Two items this evening. Board of Trustees actions from the 5th of August and the CEO CFO's reports dated August and July respectively. Any member want to remove anything from the consent calendar? Any member of the public wants to remove anything from the consent calendar? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. <laughs> I'll call the vote. Four ayes, one absent. Trustee Hernandez. General business? None. None. The chair has no report. Members report? None. Not today. Mr. Sampson? No, sir. Oh, Nothing perfect. Report. In that case, we will adjourn. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to call the uh, Housing Authority of the City out of Avalon meeting to order. Roll call, please, Denise. Board Member Cassidy? Here. Board Member Olson? Here. Board Member Sampson? Here. And Chairman Marshall? Here. Any announcements? None. Written communications? None. Oral communications? Anybody wish to speak? No? Okay. Proceed. Uh, one item on the consent calendar uh, this evening, Mayor, it's the actions from the July 15th Housing Authority. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Call for the vote. <laughs> Public comment on those minutes? Okay. <laughs> four, four eyes, one absent, board member Hernandez. Okay, general business. One item uh, this evening, it is the annual report for fiscal year 13-14. This is required by the state of California, wherein uh, you receive a detail of the activities, the obligations, um, so forth, of the housing authority. Any questions about that? Please let us know. I have some comments just about housing in general, but after sure. this, if that's okay. Okay, yeah. Um, any public comment? Council member? Um, I did have one question, uh, and just for the sake of private of privacy, I'm not sure. Item number one, on the inventory of assets received pursuant to health and safety code. Let's see, I'm not sure what, exhibit D. Item number one, do, do we know if that has transferred hands yet? Let me get there really quick. A, B, C. What page is that? Exhibit D, it's the... It's down, this is the down Not payment assistance. Yeah. Um, let me... Amanda... Did you say number one? I'm sorry, what was the question? Number, number one, is that has that changed oh, hands or is that still the same? 
I don't know. The housing authority Entity. authorized her to have a renter in there. Okay, great. Okay, very okay. good. Thank you very much. Ben, that was prior you. Thank that's you. Why you that's why you didn't know. <laughs> I'll take your word on that. Right. Um, Let's go. Hmm? Yes. yes. No, that's right. right. Matter. Nothing. Okay. All right. Public comment? Is that your counsel? Move that the Housing Authority adopt a resolution approving a Housing Authority annual report for fiscal year 2013 slash 14. Is there a second? Second. Call for the motion. Four ayes, one absent. Board Member Hernandez. So regarding housing, um, I would like us to think seriously about housing as along with everything else we're having to think about these days. Um, in reviewing this information, it was interesting, it, I guess it does illustrate that the city at some point really didn't want to have anything to do with housing. Uh, if you notice, we sold two pieces of property for $150,000 a piece. Anyway, that just, that's rather upsetting to me. And so we bought high, we sell low. Um, but we have four pieces of property up on East Whitley that aren't moving. I don't think we've gotten any offers. Um, and so I would like us to consider, since housing is an issue, is consider with our money building four more units on that property and either condoing them and selling them to moderate income families or renting them out. And I would like to discuss that and I would also like to discuss the possibility about of purchasing another unit in town. There's a three unit place on Sumner for $695,000, that's cheap housing. Um, looks pretty good from the outside, but who knows, maybe we could take a tour. Um, I'm a little concerned we're gonna end up with a pot full of money and then have to sit here and go and we're gonna pay you 25 bucks on your rent and you're gonna get 50 and all of that. So I think between the first time home buyers and, and that we might be able to, I think we should look at it seriously. I don't know the, the direction that we want to advise staff, but I sure would like to look at it. We, we'd be creating new, new housing opportunities for low and moderate income um, families, correct? Yes. Yeah. Which is yeah. what, uh, something that we really need in this yeah. community. And, um, the property's not moving anyway, so we might as well put it to good use. It, it's just, it's, I sure think it's worth looking at. I like your idea. I think we could have a, uh, I think it'd be appropriate to have a study session um, where we can uh, provide information to the authority about all the current assets we have, the status of those, right. um, because this, these are, because of the demise of redevelopment, these are one-time funds. Yes. And so you've got one shot to make it right, and um, you've got you've got potentially millions of dollars out there to spend. Right. But however, if we condoed them, then we would have money coming back. Well, if yeah, I mean, in terms a certain of certain amount if, of money coming back, because we condo them. We're, we don't give them to them. Right, right. So if you're suggesting that we'd stay in the housing business yes. and be the landlord of some lower low yes. income units, yes. and you would have income coming in. Often that income isn't enough to <laughs> cover the cost uh, for low income units, but it's certainly something we could look at the numbers for and explain to you in a, in a study session. Yeah. Well, how can somebody else build houses and manage to make it and we would lose money? They're often done by nonprofits. Well, we are that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, right. uh, they, no, but there's there's and different there incentives. Ways. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you yeah, can right. get you can get you can get tax credits. You can have a big, profitable development in Beverly Hills, and then you can use buy property and for low income that you're losing money on an Avalon and get tax credits for to offset that. Right. So. Well, I know we talked about having a housing one, and I know it's right. another another group get together, but probably important. Okay. Because okay. I don't think we can turn our back on housing. I think it's mm -hmm. important that you know we have identified a pot of money, and I think we need to know what the restrictions for the, that use of that money is. Right. right. So yes. And then you need to be educated. And the you study need... session will reveal that. Yes. Yes. 
Okay. But then we'll also talk about our goals. We'll also mm -hmm. decide what the goals are so that we can then know what we're marching towards with that money. Exactly. Yeah. No, perfect. Okay. That's all. So. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Where are we, kids? Uh, reports. Back to no, we did them all. Well, no, we didn't. Oh, how authority. authority. Oh, okay. Do we have a city manager housing authority report? None. City attorney. Uh, for the housing authority, no, but for the council agenda, yes. Okay. Go ahead. No. We have to close this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't have any reports. Council members, do you have any reports? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to close this meeting. Okay. okay. Now we're going back to successor agency. Okay. Back to the successor agency. Yeah, so, so Mayor, we, we have a closed session, but we also have the city attorney and the city manager reports, I think, that still remain. Okay. You had your chance. Do you want to do that prior to the closed yes. session? Yeah. Please. Okay, so let's go ahead real quick. Okay. Unless you want to, why don't you go ahead? Okay. Um, as you know, we have, the uh, city has um, been involved in some regulatory actions uh, brought by the state of California concerning the school site. I'm happy to report that uh, today we've received uh, three checks, um, reimbursements for this, which all grand total are 65000 63500 we expect that more checks will be coming, but these are checks that will go into the general fund uh, of the city, so there are no restrictions on these. So this is the first of several reimbursements that we've been talking about, but we got them uh, today. So I'm going to hand these checks over to the finance department. I would hope so. And all I have is I also attended the League of California Cities meeting, and one thing that I was excited about that I'm going to be bringing back is customer service training, which this council has identified as a priority, um, as well as uh, supervisor training. So that will be coming in the fall. Thank you. Very good. And I'm sorry, Annie, I have one more announcement, if go I could, ahead. before we go into closed section. Um, just a reminder to everyone that we are in phase two water rationing and the importance of conserving water. You can find more information at uh, the SaveOurHTO.org website. And also, if there is any report of an offense on water use, um, the number to call for Edison is 1-800-367-8851. Let them know that you are calling regarding Catalina, and they are trained to handle your call appropriately. Perfect. That was very good. And this is when I should announce it. This part <laughs> that I'm, I'm replacing yes. Bob. Yes. Now I'd like to announce I'm replacing Bob Kennedy, mayor, on the oversight board committee, and we're having a meeting tomorrow. Tomorrow at 12:25. Okay. Now we're going into closed session. Yeah, one closed session item. This is existing litigation, Long Beach Unified School District. They're suing us again uh, versus the City of Apple. Again? Not a continuum? Nope. This is a new case. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming. We will be back. Okay. Attorney Campbell? Aye. There's no reportable action. Okay. Well, I would like to announce that there is a special meeting. Uh, we're going to be looking at transportation tomorrow at 5 p.m. Meeting adjourned.